While bird feeders are the most often used method to attract songbirds into the yard, are they the best option? Bird feeders must be filled and cleaned often, and they offer nothing for non-seed eating birds or pollinators, not to mention the rising cost of the feed to fill them. And if they are placed improperly, feeders often become an all-you-can-eat buffet for the local predator population. Using an ecosystem approach to attract birds makes much more sense. With an ecosystem approach to attracting birds, their needs for food, cover, water, and a place to raise their young are all provided for without the cost and hassle of maintaining bird feeders. An ecosystem approach will also provide for pollinators and other wildlife, and if planned well, will look absolutely stunning. Let's start off with how to provide food. The first step will be replacing those bird feeders with native flowers that will produce seed that is preferred by birds. There are plenty of choices, and many of the most popular native wildflowers also produce seed that birds love. If you would like to see a video on some of the best native flowers for seed-eating birds, let me know down in the comments. In addition to seed, many species of insects will overwinter in the dead stems and flower heads, and birds will pick them out when the cold sets in. A huge plus to planting native wildflowers over bird feeders is that wildflowers will also support a wide range of pollinators, and if the correct species are planted, native pollen specialist bees, which I did a video about that I will link in the description. Of course, many of those visiting pollinators will be butterflies and moths, which brings us to the next way native plants can help to provide food, which is to plant caterpillar host plants. Obviously, host plants are super important to the butterflies and moths whose caterpillars rely on them, but we are talking about feeding birds here. Caterpillars are a huge food source for birds, not only for insectivorous birds like warblers and the yellow-billed cuckoo, but also for seed-eating birds such as sparrows, which require huge amounts of caterpillars during the nesting season to feed their young. Think of caterpillars as the fuel baby birds require to grow. The more caterpillars available, the more baby birds can be fed and hopefully fledged. Of course, to have baby birds, the adults must have a place to nest, and a good way to provide that is to plant some native shrubs. Shrubs are super important in a backyard bird plan and so often left out and forgotten. The main reason you need shrubs for birds is that shrubs provide dense cover. Many species of backyard birds prefer to nest in thick shrub cover. Those that don't nest in the shrubs will still use them for loafing, feeding, and most importantly, as escape cover. Songbirds are preyed upon by all sorts of critters, from native hawks, red foxes, and snakes, to introduced free-ranging domestic cats, which are especially hard on them. So give the birds some cover to escape into and plant some shrubs. Species with dense branching and thorns provide the best cover, but any shrub cover is better than none. Also, a mix of deciduous and evergreen shrubs can be used to provide varied cover all year long. If you like learning about ecosystem approaches for providing for backyard wildlife, dive into that like button like a bird into a shrub. Native shrubs have a ton of value beyond being cover. Many also provide food for birds in the form of nuts, berries, or seeds. Some of the best caterpillar host plants in eastern North America are shrubs, and their blooms support all types of pollinators, including several pollen specialist bees. Choosing shrub species wisely will elevate your backyard habitat in ways that not only benefit the birds, but also pollinators and other wildlife, like a functioning ecosystem should. While it's hard to beat the native shrubs for the value they bring to the table, let's not forget their larger cousins, the native trees. Let me just start by saying, not all habitat projects require trees, nor are all spaces conducive to the planting of trees. Smaller yards or spaces with many buildings in and around them and areas with power lines are best left without large trees growing in them. But where there is space, trees can add another layer of habitat niches that will be utilized by birds. Trees provide similar cover to shrubs, only at a greater height, and may allow birds to escape from ground-based predators such as feral cats by flying up into the high branches. There are also many species of bird that prefer to nest higher off the ground or in cavities that will find trees more to their liking. The highest ranking caterpillar host plants by number of species hosted in eastern North America are several genera of trees, and they can provide an enormous amount of caterpillar biomass that can be converted to bird biomass. I did a video about the best tree and shrub host plants that I will link in the description. Trees that produce nuts, berries, seeds, and other fruits also provide food for birds from small species like cedar waxwings up to larger birds like pileated woodpeckers and even wild turkey. Before I get to the final piece of this backyard bird attracting ecosystem, I would like to take a moment to talk about an opportunity we are offering here at Backyard Ecology. Creating a backyard ecosystem like I am describing in this video 
takes planning and can be overwhelming if you have never done it before. It can be tough to even get started because of information overload from the internet and social media. That's why we are offering a class to simplify it all, how to create wildlife habitat, a comprehensive course for the eastern U.S. This is more than just a series of videos. There are videos, but also live sessions with Shannon and I to discuss them and also for you to ask specific questions about your project. There is also a workbook that when completed will give you a step-by-step -step plan for creating your backyard dream habitat. You will have access to a private forum where you can ask questions and interact with other participants in the course and have direct access to Shannon and myself. We only offer this course a couple of times a year and limit enrollment so everybody gets the attention they deserve. If you want to become a backyard ecologist and take your backyard from a grass desert to a pollinator and wildlife oasis, you can learn more about this opportunity at the link in the description. The last piece of our ecosystem puzzle is a source of water. Birds are highly attracted to water, especially water that has some movement to it. They not only drink water, but also bathe in it to clean their feathers. The size of your water feature will largely be determined by your space and by your budget. A bird bath is a great choice for a smaller space or a smaller budget. While a simple bird bath that just holds water will attract birds, it can be made even more attractive with the addition of a small pump that causes ripples on the water's surface and produces a gurgling sound. The next step up from the bird bath is a full blown in the ground pond. These are available as pre-molded liners from 20 to 200 gallons and even larger, or can be made in any size and shape with a flexible liner. Of course, a pond type water feature is going to cost more to install, but once done, it should last forever. And do they draw the birds? All kinds of birds. If you like to take pictures of birds, it is hard to beat a water feature for setting up shots. Songbirds don't require or want deep water, so areas of shallow water must be provided for them. An inch or so is plenty for birds to bathe in. When it comes to adding water movement to a pond, there are many options, from waterfalls to bubblers and fountains. Your imagination is the limit. Another cool thing about ponds is that you can incorporate native wildflowers and small shrubs into them. Of course, they must be moist soil species or emergent wetland species. A well-designed and planted pond will also draw frogs, toads, and salamanders, and the occasional mammal will stop by for a sip. While pollinators may use a bird bath or pond for water on occasion, they prefer other ways of obtaining moisture. I did a video about this, which I will link in the description. The best part of using an ecosystem approach to attract birds to your yard is that it also provides for pollinators and other wildlife, something bird feeders alone will never accomplish. Creating a functioning backyard ecosystem should be the goal of every backyard ecologist, and to accomplish this, some planning and forethought is required. For some guidance on how to start planting a pollinator garden, check out this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.